Hey guys, I'm Tatiana, and in today's video I'm going to share with you how I built an e-commerce store that does roughly $6,000 per day in sales. So I'm going to share with you just what I did and what worked for me, um, but first I'd like to pre-frame this entire video by being transparent with you guys and hopping behind the computer to show you the live sales stats. Hi right, guys, so this is my Shopify store. These are the sales stats from the last 30 days. So I'm just going to refresh it so you can see that it's fresh. So yeah, so about 157,000. Um, and remember that this is just revenue, this isn't profit. And then over here, this is my Amazon store. Honestly, we've been out of stock for quite a while, so sales are down. As you can see, they're usually around 30, 35,000 a month. But over the last 30 days, about 17,000. So that's what happens when you're out of stock. You really don't want to be out of stock. It was not ideal, but it just, it happened and that's fine. So together, you know, roughly $6,000 a day in revenue. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, um, let's start at the beginning. So I first got into e-commerce by learning about selling products on Amazon, just as maybe some of you guys are watching my videos right now, you're just learning about it. And that was around 2015 for me. So 2015, I started to kind of learn about the process. Um, I took a course called The Amazing Selling Machine, which if you guys are interested, I'm going to link down below. It was the best course available at that time. And the cool thing is, is that it's still the best course. And so I took that course, I just followed it step by step, and I launched my first product. Now my first product, like it wasn't a product that I was expecting to make a ton of money from because it was, you know, I didn't have a lot of money to put into the business. I was 20 years old, you know, I didn't have much money to invest in the business. So it was a very small product, I paid 20 cents a unit. But what was valuable for me was not the money I was making from the sales, but it was the experience of learning this process. Because this whole process of private labeling a product and selling it on Amazon, it's a step-by-step process. You know, you can learn it once and then you can replicate it and do it again and again and again. And so I did that in 2015. I launched my first product in tw uh, 2015 or yeah, 2016. I launched a second product doing the exact same process. I went through the course again and just kind of refreshed my memory. And then I applied all of what I learned. I launched a second product. But when I was launching these products, I was not building a brand. I was just kind of like throwing a product on Amazon and I did product research to make sure that there was some demand for that product. Um, but I really wasn't doing anything outside of Amazon. So I just kind of put it up on Amazon and I think I did a, a little bit of m minimal PPC and then that was that. And then by the time it was, I guess, 2017, yeah, 2017, I decided that, hey, I'm going to launch my third product, and this time I'm going to build a brand, because I really saw the value in building a brand long term. You know, it's, yes, you can make a ton of money just launching products on Amazon, but you know, you're kind of more limited. When you build a brand, you get to be more in control of that brand and you own your own customer base and you have more control over just all of the details about the brand. And it's just like you're building a real business. It's not just a business on Amazon. You're building a real business that you can later sell one day. Not that you can't sell Amazon businesses. You absolutely can. It just has a bit more potential. So anyways, I decided I'm gonna build a brand with this product, and so I picked a product that I felt would be brandable. So it wasn't just like a commodity product, like a spatula or like a trash can, because yes, you can sell those products on Amazon, and yes, they sell because people are, they need these things, you know, everyone's buying these things, they're never gonna go out of style, but it's not something that you're gonna like build an Instagram account for. Like, here's my trash can and I'm gonna take a picture of my trash can. Like, it's just, it's different. And so there's two different types of products on Amazon, right? They're like the products that are the commodities, the ones that just like organically sell because people are naturally going on Amazon to buy these products. You don't really have to sell someone on buying this product. They were going to Amazon with the intention of buying it in the first place. And then there's products where, you know, you kind of do have to sell people on it. People maybe didn't know that they wanted this product until you, your marketing told them that they want it or that they need it. And so that's where I landed on my third product. Um, and so with this product, did the same process of private labeling, which if you guys don't know what private labeling is, essentially you find a manufacturer that is already creating this product. 
So you're not inventing anything new. And so they already have this product in stock and you just slap your brand name on the product. Now, that's kind of like what private labeling is, but these days on Amazon, there's a lot more competition. You gotta do things to differentiate yourself from your competition, and that means improving the product. You know, maybe tweaking the product a little bit. Maybe it's like, you know, improving the quality of the product, or, you know, making, doing something to stand out. Because if you're just going to slap your label on a product and throw it up on Amazon, it's just more of the same thing. And nobody's gonna buy from you. What reason do they have to buy from you? You're not any different than someone else who's been on Amazon for a much longer time, has much more reviews, you know, they're gonna go with that person. So you wanna differentiate yourself. And so I realized this with my third product, but I didn't really want to invest the money into tweaking the product. Because every time you make a tweak in the product, it's called customization. And your supplier is gonna charge you for that customization. And so I didn't want to invest too much. So I said, okay, I'm just going to order like 30 units. I don't even really remember how much my first order was and just sell them on Amazon. I was having one color of this product and I only had like a few different sizes. And so I started selling that on Amazon and then I saw that there was some demand there. So I proved my concept by selling out of my initial inventory. And then I went back to my supplier with my second order, placed a larger order, and then with this order, I decided that I was going to tweak the product even more. So essentially, every time I placed a new order with the supplier, I would slightly tweak the product. So I would slightly change the product. Nothing dramatic, nothing major, but I would make some improvements. And the way that I knew how to make those improvements was, first of all, because I was a user of the product. I used the product myself so I knew what was great about it, I knew what wasn't that great, but also because I was obsessed about the customers. I was obsessed about reading other people's reviews on Amazon and seeing what people loved about the product, what people hated about the product. And so my role was like, I'm gonna create a product that is like the best of everything. And I'm gonna make sure that people love everything about it. And of course, you know, it, it just takes time. And so with each order, I would tweak the product a little bit. Now, by tweaking the product a little bit, I was able to take myself from just private labeling a product to now, at this time, having a product that's very unique. So I have now a product that, although it's a product that, yes, like other people are selling this product, my product stands out from other brands. And it's not something that you can just go ahead and private label because of the agreements that I have with my suppliers. So you can do that. So eventually with time, you can actually build kind of like your own product by developing relationships with suppliers. And obviously, you know, the larger your orders are, the more willing they are to accommodate you. So I did that and at this time, so it was actually, I kind of went a little bit too far forward. But just so you guys know, when I launched my second product, that's when I decided to kind of dabble in social media. So prior to that, I wasn't really doing any social media, no Instagram, no YouTube, nothing. With my second product towards the end of its life, I was like, hey, you know what? I think like I'm gonna start social media, you know, building up my business pages and stuff. And so really I would say it was at the time that I was launching my third product that I really started to actually um, be present on social media. And so I knew that there's so many different social media platforms, you know, there's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's Pinterest, there's Facebook, there's YouTube, there was Snapchat, which was a lot bigger back then, but I was like, that's too much, I'm just gonna focus on one or two. And so I picked YouTube as my main platform, and I chose YouTube just because I saw that, you know, it has probably the least competition in some ways in terms of like not a lot of businesses are using YouTube for marketing and then I also saw that the potential reach with YouTube is just exponential you know you never know how many views a video is gonna get you just can't predict it and also just the bit the relationship aspect of YouTube videos you know to be able to communicate with someone and to allow them to feel like they're getting to know you and getting to see your product you know, live. Because the thing is, guys, when you have an e-commerce business, it can be challenging to get a customer to buy the product. It's harder than in retail, because in retail, they get to use all of their senses. They get to touch the product, they get to smell the product, they get to look at the product, they get to, you know, hear the product if it has noise. They get to use their senses. But with an e-commerce product, they're relying on the visual. And so you have to market this product. You have to do your best 
to explain and describe this product in a way that they feel like they almost feel like they're here holding it in front of them. And so that's why video is really powerful because with video, you know, I can show you a product and, you know, you're going to feel like you're seeing it yourself with your own eyes. You know, you almost forget sometimes that this is through a lens. And so I saw the power of that. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to be consistent with it. And also the reason why I chose the social media is because, again, didn't have a lot of money and it's free. And so if any of you guys are like, listen, I want to do this, but I don't have a lot of money to get started, you know, there, that's not a reason for you not to get started. You know, I think we're all a little bit too spoiled these days, thinking that you need tons of money to start a business, thinking that you need to go and get loans or investors. Like, that was not a thing. If you want to just start a business, you go, you work hard at a job, you save money, and then you take that money to invest into a business. You don't just like say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a business, let me go find investors. No, you have to like it start something. You got to show them something, prove something first. And so it's going to require your investment of working hard to make some money to save and invest into this business. Sorry, like that's something that sometimes I see a lot of people commenting like, oh, but I don't have the money for it. And I understand like, you know, certain times like there are, you know, certain people are in more of a tough financial situation than others. But for the most part, I know a lot of you guys are, you know, sitting at home watching YouTube videos from the luxury of your iPhone, your computer, your iPad. And if you have access to these things, you know, you probably have ways of making money. You can probably go get a second or third job and just hustle and grind instead of sitting and watching videos and, you know, just earning that extra money and then learning how to save it. Because it's one thing to earn money. It's another thing to be able to save that money. So uh, having, you know, financial literacy, learning how to manage your money, because if you don't know how to manage money now, it's going to be so much harder for you when you're actually making all of these sales, when you're making $6,000 a day, you might waste $6,000 a day if you don't have those money management skills. So social media, free, anyone can do it. That is why nobody has an excuse. So a lot of you guys say, yeah, but I don't want to be on social media. I don't want to start a YouTube channel. Neither did I. I didn't want to. But sometimes you don't get the luxury of doing what you want to do. Sometimes you have to do things because you know that's what's going to help you succeed. And, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And that's just the way it is. So you got to sometimes just do it. You know, forget, like, don't rely on your emotions all the time saying, like, I don't feel like this, I don't feel like that. If you always just do what you feel, you're never going to get anything done. Let's be honest. <laughs> Most of us don't feel like working all the time and all of these things. So anyways, um, that's what I did. So the social media was really big for me because social media is then what allowed me to take my brand from just selling on Amazon exclusively to now selling on my website. So at around, I think it was 2018, yeah, I think 2018, I think, or maybe 2017, I can't recall, but I was doing around $40,000 a month in sales on amazon.com. And so I was seeing consistently that I was making about $40,000 a month in sales. It wasn't like it was just one month, it was consistent. And so I felt comfortable enough at that point in time to say, okay, I've proven my concept, I've got a business now, I've got something here, and I feel like I'm building a brand. I feel like I'm having recurring customers and I believe that I can take this thing off of Amazon. So what I did is I set up a Shopify, actually initially it was a WordPress website, which I do not recommend if you're gonna do e-commerce, just go for Shopify. You know, WordPress is really meant for blogging and it just, I always had so many issues with WordPress when it came to e-commerce. So go for Shopify. So I did WordPress initially, eventually I transitioned to Shopify. We'll just call it my Shopify store. So I started my own website and what I did was I still had my listing on Amazon and I still had my inventory in Amazon, but then I started to, I found a fulfillment center outside of Amazon. Because the thing is that, yes, you can use Amazon FBA, which stands for Fulfilled by Amazon. It's a fulfillment center, it's Amazon's fulfillment center, and it's wonderful, but you only want to be using it if you're going to be using it to sell products on Amazon because you get privileges, you get to ship with Prime, and they kind of boost your listing when you're, you're FBA. But if you have inventory stored at Amazon's warehouse and you're selling this inventory on your website, 
that doesn't make sense because Amazon's fulfillment centers are quite expensive. And so at, in this scenario, it's better to go and find another warehouse outside of Amazon and just store inventory there and then link it to your website and sell directly that inventory to your website. So I found a warehouse, which don't ask me what warehouse I have, just go to Google and type in fulfillment center, Miami, fulfillment center, California, fulfillment center, wherever you live or whatever state you would like to have that fulfillment center in. What I did is I found what was like the, the state where I was having the most sales. And then I was like, okay, it makes sense to have a fulfillment center in that state because then I'm gonna have faster shipping for people. So I did that and I found a fulfillment center. I literally just searched it on Google. I called a bunch of different fulfillment centers and the one that I resonated the most with, the one that had the best communication, the one that had reasonable rates, that's the one I went with. So you guys can do that too. And then what I did is I now shipped inventory to the fulfillment center. And then I linked it directly to my store. So just like your Amazon account links with Amazon's warehouse, it also has the capacity to do the same thing with a fulfillment center. Because usually they have their own AI that allows them to link. And then basically just started taking orders on the website. Now the reason that I was able to do that transition, people ask me all the time, Tatiana, how did you go from you know, selling on Amazon to being able to sell on your website. That was the power of social media. And so that's why I really emphasize taking the time and the energy and the effort to, you know, build up some social media following because what I did is I said, hey everyone, listen, you know, all the products are gonna be sold on the website now. We have a wider range of products that we sell on the website. If you want more sizes, more colors, faster shipping, well not faster shipping actually, but you know, like just more variety than you can buy on our website. And in order to kind of incentivize people to shop on the website, initially I was doing like a, a promo code. So get like, you know, 20% off your order. So people are like, okay, well why would I buy on Amazon? What I could get 20% off buying on the website? So I did that initially, and once you get enough people to shop on the website, it starts to become like people feel comfortable with it. And um, so now I would say 75, 80% of my sales are on my website. So smaller, much smaller percentage are done on Amazon. I really at this point prefer when people buy on my website just because I have much higher profit margins on my website. I'm more in control. I have the customer's information for myself. I have much more options in terms of marketing. I'm not just limited to an Amazon listing. Yeah, and then that's it. So that's basically what I did. And so now my product with my website and my Amazon sales does about $6,000 a day in sales. But you guys have to take note of this. It took me five years. And that's the thing is that I find that we see these stories and we feel like, oh, you know, I'm going to start selling on Amazon this year and I'm going to be making $5,000 a month this year. And we get like super anxious and we just don't have enough patience. But the truth of the matter is that, you know, that's what it kind of takes sometimes, you know, it, it is kind of a slow road. And I will say also that for myself, I took the slow path because I decided to pay zero dollars in marketing. So I decided that I'm just going to get all organic traffic. So the $6,000 a month, that is organic. So we don't have any marketing expenses. So my profit margins are really high thanks to that, but I could be doing 10, $20,000 a day. Sorry, I said a month, but I could be doing 10, $20,000 a day if I was actually, you know, paying for advertising. But it doesn't matter to me. I don't care to just share with you that I'm doing $10,000 a day in sales when I'm not having profits. You know, I'd much rather have the profits and, you know, lower figures. So that's personally my thing. Eventually, yes, I definitely will, you know, go into the paid advertising route. I'm just waiting for the right partner for that because it's not my specialty. Um, but anyways, that is what happened, that's it. So I just wanna make sure you guys know, like it is a journey, it doesn't happen overnight. You just have to stay consistent. And so if you're consistent with things, if you just keep at it, you know, the content route, I was just talking with a girlfriend the other day, she has like this fitness YouTube channel that she started 10 months ago. And she's like, you know, Tatiana, I'm putting out a video once a week and I'm just like, I've got 300 or 500 subscribers. And I just feel like giving up. And I said, you know, you just have to be patient. Just keep putting out the content, stick to it. 
Don't get into this shiny object syndrome where the moment you feel like, okay, this isn't working, I'm gonna move on to the next thing. Keep at it because what happens is like we are just, we don't keep at one thing. We, we see, okay, like I'm gonna give this three months and if it doesn't work in three months, I'm gonna try something else. But sometimes you really do have to give it some more time and sometimes you really do have to work harder and you have to try new things and exhaust different uh, opportunities and ideas and sometimes we just don't put in enough effort. So that's what I want to share with you guys today. Hopefully it helps you. I don't know. Like that was just my journey. I'm not saying that that's everyone's journey to $6,000 a month in sales. That's just what worked for me, what happened for me. And uh, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have questions, comment down below. Otherwise, I will see you in my next video. Um, and we're going to be talking about Amazon FBA, some tips, tricks to help get you started. And by the way, guys, if you want to start your Amazon business and you don't know where to get started, I've got a free training down below. So you can go to tatianajames.com slash free training or click the link in the description. It's a complete series. It's like, I think, nine videos of me just sharing with you basically what this business is all about. So if you're lost, that's where you can get started. It's free. Go dive in. Enjoy. Bye.